way to illustrate this than a, than a nice diagram comparing the Fourier sine series and the Fourier cosine series of the same function. Now remember, um, not too long ago, that when, when I did this thing, or actually it was just five minutes ago, okay, the Fourier cosine series, Fourier cosine series of, of this function over here is given by um, this juggernaut of an equation, which I'll just quickly write. Okay, so the Fourier sine series of the same function e to the 2x at the same um, range, okay, from um, 0 to 1, like I have over here, 0 to 1, is given by this expression over here. Whereas the Fourier sine series is given by this expression over here. So what we want to do is most logically compare the two. So let's just draw the graph first of e to the 2x and, you know, let us get a feel of things, which I will just, for convenience sake, draw it this way. At the points between x, okay, um, is less than 0 and l, Okay, both the, okay, let's just say Fourier cosine series and Fourier sine series converges to the function. And okay, we know that um, f of x is continuous from 0 to 1, or 0 to 1, so actually 0 to L, yeah, 0 to 1 over here. So the Fourier cosine series and the Fourier sine series is going to be converged to the same function. There's no surprise about that. Now, how about the endpoints? So, let's just tackle the Fourier cosine series first. Now, what, remember the convergence theorem that I showed you in the previous uh, video? It tells us that at the endpoints, which is function um, as we approach zero from the po um, positive side as we approach zero from the positive side is going to be equal to the limit as h tends towards zero plus of the function zero plus h now if we were to put that function over here or sorry that variable zero plus h inside here and later let h tends towards zero we are basically going to get one okay we're going to get one because yeah, we're going to get 1. H is going to tend towards 0, so basically this is going to be 0. E to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. So this is going to be 1 like so. Now, if you were to also calculate as we approach the 1, which is basically the other side of the limit from the negative side, we are going to get E to the 2, E to the 2, which is a certain number, of course. This was the Fourier cosine series, but what about the Fourier sine series? Well, I just told you at both 0 and 1, Okay, the Fourier sine series is going to converge towards zero, right? So what does that tell us? That tells us that when we use the Fourier sine series and when we use the Fourier cosine series, uh, find the expansion, the half range expansion of a certain function, the convergence theorem shows us that they would not converge to the same spot. Let's handle the Fourier cosine series first. Well, actually, it's a bit easy because based, actually these numbers, right, are, are correspond exactly to the function over there. So, you know, if I were to take the n partial sum of the Fourier cosine series, uh, if, it's, if I start zero, I'll get maybe something like that, okay? And, and, and if I take more n partial sums, and later when I take up to infinity, the Fourier cosine series is gonna go exactly to the function as well as the end point. So if I were to, you know, just draw a, a dot, that okay so as the endpoints which is this one over here so this is basically the Fourier cosine series how about the Fourier sine series well the Fourier sine series tells us that from x0 to 1 is going to converge towards at f that's that is fine for the Fourier sine series but at x equals to 0 and x equals to 1 Fourier sine series tends towards 0 so Fourier sine series starts as over here okay immediately jump up go on the curve f of x and then later drop back down towards um y y equals to zero which is basically like this over here and this is the Fourier sine series okay i re-emphasize again why does that happen because if we were to substitute the endpoints inside the sine function you know sine n pi is going to be equal to zero so basically we don't have the series at all so um that, that's it you know two ways to represent the same function or you know two ways to represent the the same half range expansion of a certain function but via convergence theorem which you know is very important tells us at the at the endpoints the Fourier sine, Fourier sine series and the Fourier cosine series converges to different places at the endpoints. So, you know, if you need a function that starts from here, goes up, and then comes down, use the Fourier sine series. If you need a function that starts from here, and follows the function and goes up there, stays up there, use the Fourier cosine series. Now, I don't know why you need that, but it's something that's good to know, okay? So, that concludes our part on the half-range expansion. Okay, I hope you enjoy it.